Okay, today we're going to talk about how to train Flux Dev uh, using Ostris's AI Toolkit. Um, just make sure you can follow the requirements here. Uh, it's really important that you have 24 gigs of VRAM. I'm running this on a 3090Ti. So obviously it can handle, or it can be handled pretty well on a local machine, but it can't be handled on a local machine that doesn't have enough VRAM. There's a lot of cool tools here too, but we're just going to focus on this for today. Okay, so next we are going to open up command prompt, as you can see here, and then we just have to point towards the right directory. So we're going to go through that step by step. Um, first, I have everything in a work directory, so that's sort of my like, overarching one. And then I've set up a folder for this that I'm going to populate and pull this all into called tree, as you can see here. And then we're just going to go through line by line. As you can see, um, there might be like a better way to do this. I am not really a coder, so I'm just going to do it in the way that's the most intuitive for me. Um, so just trying to populate each one of these. And some of them might take a little longer, in which case I'll just uh, pause and, you know, um, come come back to it. It won't look like anything happened, but that is maybe a little easier on you guys. So I'm going to probably do that for this one. Let's see. Yeah, this one's taking a little bit more time. But it's all in all, it goes pretty fast. Um, these last ones are going to take some time, so I'll definitely be pausing during these. Yeah, I'm going to paste them anyway. There might be a better way again to do that. Sorry if there is. Uh, all right, so here we go. And we're going to let these dependencies load. And yep, I'm just feeding forward to the future, running this as well, letting this all sort of come together. And now we have everything sort of uh, pulling, pulling in. So that is good. It's important, obviously, to make sure all these dependencies are set up for the correct way. And now it should be ready to get started. But there are a couple more things that we have to do to set up uh, the training. So we're going to do that next. Um, let's see. In particular, we're going to focus on setting up the YAML file with the settings. Okay, now we're going to set up that YAML file, which has really like all of the details that we need to give in terms of hyperparameters. So you're going to find that in the configure folder. There's an example. It's called train Laura Flux 24 gig. You want to copy that one and make a new version of it, which is great. And I'm just going to rename it um, train... Well, I really want it to reflect what I'm training. So I'm training a Phantasma anime Laura, which is based on a Laura I've trained previously for SDXL. So we're going to call it that. And then we're actually going to put it into the config folder. So let me just move these. Oops, went a little too far. And drop that right in. Great. Um, we're going to go ahead and edit that. So we want to go through line by line. So first and foremost, I'm probably going to get rid of some of this extra script, um, but it might be useful for you. Uh, you do need to change the name to the file name that you're going to want. So go ahead and do that first. Uh, I think I'm going to call it, well, I could call it the same thing, but actually in this case, I'm calling it phantasma underscore anime. And that's going to be the name of the final safe tensor. We're going to delete some more of this text. Some things we don't really want to change either. Um, so let's go through here. Delete that. We're going to want to, uh, I, I want to change my output folder. So output is a subfolder and I'm just adding a subfolder which it will populate. I'm going to uncomment this. Uh, just so that we get those performance stats in the future. I like them. Um, it's up to you whether you want to keep them or not. Uh, we're keeping the CUDA device the same. 
and we're going to change the trigger word in this case. I don't know if the trigger word makes a difference or not. Um, I haven't actually seen a massive difference, but it does definitely recognize the trigger word. So, you know, worth worth investigating. Um, I'm going to change, this is uh, linear and linear alpha are your rank and dimension. So I'm changing them both to 32. It's good to keep them the same number. Um, Float 16, it's four. I'm going to do every 200 steps here. So I, basically, I want the save tensor file to save and also some sample images to generate every 200 steps. Um, I'm fine with four. This is basically every time there's more than four save tensor files, it's going to delete the oldest. And then scrolling down a little. Uh, yep. Um, so you want to make sure that you prep your data set correctly. So this is really good information to have. Um, basically you just need the text prompt captions to be in a text file that has the same file name for it to recognize. Really standard. Uh, same for most training programs. Um, I set up a folder for this uh, that I'm going to call from here. And then that's fine. A lot of this stuff we don't really need to change because it's kind of inherent to the training unless you're like super advanced or you're just trying to figure some stuff out. I am going to turn on shuffle token. I actually didn't try this last time, but I'm really interested in trying it this time. So I'm going to do that. Um, yep, that is useful. And something that you want to keep the same cache latency to disk. Um, multiple resolutions, great. Uh, it actually solves a lot of issues as it had with SDXL and only be able to train in one. Uh, one thing I like about this trainer as well is that you can train in different sizes. Uh, so steps, adjust that step count. I don't think 4,000 is needed for this one. I'm going to go for 3,000. But I do think that people do under train this model quite a bit. Um, no text encoder training for this. I haven't really seen any negative aspects of that as you would have with like SDXL. Uh, let's see, I'm going to keep it balanced. There. Yeah, I'll just clean that up. There. Great. Um, gradient checkpointing. Yep. Yeah. I do not have a ton of VRAM, so I'm going to do that. Noise scheduler, yep. Uh, keep all of that the same. I'm not messing with the learning rate right now, but you could try out different learning rates. I do want to skip the samples because it takes up a lot of time in the beginning, and I don't necessarily need them. It's good, though, if you're trying to compare the, like, the distance that your training has gone. So I'm going to do that. Uh... I'll keep that all the same. Let's see here. All this looks fine. All important to keep. I'm not going to. I actually found that I didn't need to do the low VRAM mode, even though I am right at 24 gigs. I found that actually it was working just fine. So I'm not turning that on. You can though if you're if you're concerned. Um, also, you can restart from your last training uh, stop if you need to. This is looking, I want to do every 200, just like I have for my, uh, my save. I don't want my save to be off balance with my other stuff. And then I'm going to keep these as the prompts. I do want some prompts. Um, I, again, I just don't know if the trigger makes a difference at this stage. It very well might. Um, but I haven't seen a significant difference one way or another. I've seen a little difference, but not one that's like super significant. Um, but I'll, I'll keep the trigger in a couple of these because it'll be nice to see the difference and compare them. Then everything else is just about the same. I'll add my name into the metadata, but otherwise this is like very straightforward. I'm, I might change the prompts for the sample images if I was training like a character or something like that for, for this, I'll, I'll keep it the same. So go ahead here. Yeah, this looks good. Um, we'll go ahead and save this. And this one's good to go.
Okay, and there is one more really important step that we need to take before we really dive in, and that is we do need to uh, set things up so we can call from Hugging Face. So we're going to do these next steps in a second, but um, you need to be able to call from Hugging Face. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. Obviously, I'm not going to show you my secret key, but anyway, you just want to create a new file. You want to put it into the root, which is the AI Toolkit folder. Um, Okay, yes, so you want to put it in the AI Toolkit folder. And you want to save it as a point .env under all files. That's all you need to call it. And then you're going to take this right here, HF token equals your key here. You're going to open that file up drop it in here and then you need to replace that end bit. So I'm not going to show you mine obviously, but just replace that with a read file or read um, token from Hugging Face and that will do it. And then you just save it. It's already in the root. So it is going to be able to pull the models for you. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and set up our model to start training. So I did have to change a couple things here. So I'm just going to show you what I did for that. Um, this is all set up, we have an environment set, so we're in good shape. Uh, but I am just gonna open a note just so we can look at this and make some small adjustments because I noticed that maybe it's just a Windows thing, but I had to change the command a little bit for it to run. So uh, let's open an empty, oops, let's see. Got a lot of these open right now. So let's open an empty one here. We do want this name, by the way, for the call that we're going to do. So uh, good to know that. And drop this in. So we're going to get rid of that three after Python uh, because for some reason it's not really recognized. And in this case, I need to change it to YAML with an A. And then you just need to put in the name of that YAML file that you did before and you're good to go. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, this is where you would hit run. I actually have it set up separately as an instance because I had been training earlier and I just don't want to run through all of the model loading again and downloading because it takes a while. So when you run it for the first time, it's going to take a little bit of time, but don't worry about it. I'm going to show from where my model uh, is set up from, which is going to be like right from the start. So just explaining that a little though, just so you're not confused. Alrighty then. So you can see my fresh environment here. Um, I set it up. I put it in the V environment. I dropped that um, command that we had just put together and now it is starting everything up. So normally if you did this, it would be like a very long initial process because it's going to be pulling in, you know, the flux model and all of the other models that it needs to be able to train over. In this case, I'm saving a little bit of a headache because uh, I've already done that once before. So I really just am starting from the, um, it does download like shards and stuff, but generally most of what I need is already set up. So uh, it's loading the checkpoint pieces. It's starting to put everything together. Um, so we'll look at this for a moment, but obviously it's sort of like general running through stuff. So yeah, so oh, one nice thing is that it does uh, do buckets of different sizes. So you can use different size images, which I think is super awesome. And I love that Ostris has included that. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. I'm so happy that I don't have to crop every image. And this is sort of like how some of these newer models are trained to begin with. So it, it does make a really big difference in the overall training process to be able to show images of different um, aspect ratios. So yeah, um, other than that, I'm going to give a little pause and here we go. It has started. So, and these are all going to also save. Um, well, here you can see the actual data set that it's pulling from. It actually I should show you really what we're looking at in terms of images. So if you take a look here, I'll just uh, adjust this. Ba -ba -ba. We're going to make these extra large. So this is the style that I'm training, just to give you a little bit of a point of reference. 
um kind of an anime style i really like how anime is done on flux and uh with a lot of like color explosive elements and so we are going to jump ahead here and take a look at 200 steps in because i think this is a great sort of um visualization of how quickly things train and also just sort of like where we're at as you can see we are generating some example images here so i'll pop into those in a second to show you they're in that folder that we we're talking about earlier so let me pull those up here so we did put those right into the output folder that we looked at a little earlier and they're it actually populated the folders we need so now we can see them in samples so this is our first stop um, you can see it is starting to pick up a little bit of that cartoony style, some of the coloration, certainly the clouds, but it's uh, the explosions as well, but it's not really learned much yet. So it's just a good example of how much Flex does learn quite quickly. Um, with that in mind, it still has quite a ways to go, and I do find that people stop a little bit too early at times as well. So I'm going to show you one more stop and then I probably won't go all the way to the end, but do a second video for that part. Okay, and now we're sort of jumping further into the future. This is at 600 steps. So you can see it's already generated a few different sets of samples. And uh, what I really like to highlight here is how much we've adopted the style, but I typically let this run 3000 because it does go through cycles so I definitely recommend taking your time with it don't get too ahead of yourself because you can stop earlier than you should and find that actually you lose a lot of nuance I'm going to do a second video and probably like a little nicer video because I was just trying to get this one out quickly but basically what I've observed is that it goes through these cycles of learning and regressing um, that you know I've done a, a few trainings now that really stop at different steps and I've watched how it seems to pick up a lot of details sort of superficial details early on and then it starts to look a little bit overfit and then it kind of forgets a bunch of details and then it'll do the same thing over and over again and actually we've gotten uh with the help of ostris i was able to get a training all the way to 3400 steps and it was still looking really nice it wasn't overfit that was for a character so i think a style would actually be even more flexible in some ways um but just to keep that in mind that in fact like you can kind of Go pretty far with it so anyway you will find the files here um and they do get saved uh however many steps you've set in your yaml i did 200 once it gets to five it, because i set four as like the total limit it'll delete one of the older ones which is a nice way to save on space as well um but yeah i had thought about doing this video all the way to the end but i do think that sort of observations on training deserves a, an extra sort of focused video with some side-by-side -side examples so i'm going to work on that uh and it'll probably be better than this one because i don't usually edit the videos it's usually timothy who's on the prompt crafted team who does a lot of the video editing but i really wanted to get this out quickly because i know people are trying to pick up training as quickly as possible and i thought it would be nice to just have a little guide you should be able to adopt this guide for this in most ways but anyway uh, I appreciate appreciate you guys uh, following along, and yeah, I'm I'm excited to train more. As you can see, we're just only just above 600 steps here, but I will release this model in a couple days. Um, and it's you know it's it's quite a bit of time and energy. I, I'm guessing this will take about four hours to train total, and then I'll want to test it out. Um, you'd set it up just as you'd set up any model really. So yeah, thank you guys so much and uh, have a great one.